Just a reminder that this and all my other videos are made for doll collectors or adults buying dolls for others. This is not a video for children. Viewer discretion is advised. Thank you very much for listening. Before I was a doll collector, you may have been able to consider me a stuffed animal collector. Or maybe hoarder was the right word. In my old bedroom in New Jersey, I had nets. Multiple nets filled with stuffed animals hanging over the bed, a pile behind the bed, a pile on the bed, and several bags worth poorly stored in the basement. But that aside, there's just something about the soft fur, squishy filling, and kind faces of stuffed animals that make them really hard to resist. Especially when they're sitting in the wrong section at Target and they look up with you with those big round eyes as if they were abandoned at birth and they say, please take me home. I may have a problem. It was a hard habit to break and it's not totally broken because as I'm sure you've seen behind me here in shots and in, inside the closet and on my bed I have some stuffed animals still my favorite favorites I am a lot more picky now than I used to be but because of my dual interests in dolls and stuffed animals I've always been searching for that perfect hybrid of the best of both worlds the soft squishiness of a stuffed animal with the fashion and accessory play of a doll over the years several stuffy doll hybrids have attracted my interest from older ones like Build-A-Bears and Groovy Girls who need their own video by the way to newer ones like Na Na Na's Dream Seekers and even Disney's new emo. But most of all, this combination is true of today's video topic, the Briarberry Collection from Fisher Price. Though they lean more into the stuffed animal territory than dolls, they're still some of my favorite childhood toys, which is why I've actually kept basically every piece that I had as a kid. And I will be showing you later on in the video. So, Hello Internet, my name is Kelsey and welcome back to my closet. And yes, today's topic is the Briarberry Collection. One that I distinctly remember there being a lot of items for and I feel like they were not as uncommon as some of the other things that I have talked about in this documentary series. So maybe you guys will know about these, but then again there wasn't as much info on the internet as I had hoped. Allow me to explain. As stated before, the Briarberry collection was created by Fisher Price, Mattel's baby and toddler toy subdivision. This being the case, I was so sure that I was going to find all kinds of information and history about the brand, the people behind creating it, the inspiration, and yet there's very, very little. I guess they are more obscure than I initially thought, even though they were pretty prominently on shelves from what I remember for a few years between their initial release in 1999 and being discontinued but still being sold. If you search Briarberry Collection on Google, the link to the official website is still active. However, it now states that the brand has been discontinued and links you back to the regular Mattel site. But copying and pasting that link into the Wayback Machine, I was able to find a pretty functional version of the website, which is where I got a lot of information for this video. And as Mattel is, of course, a company that needs no introduction, we can keep the history portion of this video shorter, which will give us more time to look into my personal collection, which is pretty extensive. I think that of all the toys that I had as a child, including Barbie and Bratz, this is one of the few that I kept most of the pieces for. From the little history I was able to garner, the line was introduced in 1999 and ended in 2000 with the tagline, made to be played with, meant to be cherished. The official website markets them towards girls ages three and up who are in that transitional stage of still liking stuffed animals, specifically teddy bears, but also maybe leaning towards older girls' toys like fashion dolls. The line was clearly aimed at a younger demographic as well, based on the website, because not only did it list the items that were available on the 1999 release, it also contained a section called Fun. When you click this link, it brought you to three little games that probably wouldn't entertain a child who was older than six or seven, but were still cute for a very innocent and sweet line like Briarberry. These included a dress-up game, a create-your-own-story a la Mad Libs, and some coloring pages that parents could print out. The seven main characters of the line were, of course, bears, which begs the question of why they didn't name it the Briar bear e collection 
seems like a missed opportunity for some puns there from the creators of Monster High, but I digress. But there were also a few other animals available called friends, including a sheep, a cat, a poodle, and a bunny. Each plush was poseable with movable arms and legs, a variety of fur colors, flocked muzzles with different expressions, and flat feet made of a hard material that allowed them to stand. The names of the characters were also embroidered on the bottom of the left foot, so it made it easier to remember each of their names, especially because they all contained the word Barry in some way. For some, this trope worked smoothly, such as Barry Lynn or Sarah Barry. They roll off the tongue. Others sounded a bit more clumsy, like Barry Chris and Barry Beth. There was even a boy bear named Barry Ben. But hey, kudos to them for sticking to their theme. Each of the main plushes retailed for about $16. They came with an outfit and a headband or ear accessory of some kind, usually a bow that just rubber banded around the ear. The outfits were made of velour or cotton to make sure things stayed extra soft, save for a few specially themed outfits that may have used satin or nylon. The colors tended to be pale and pastel to very rich and deep. Not very many bright colors that you might associate with other toys from Mattel and Fisher Price. This extended to the extra outfits as well that were sold as fashion packs. Priced at $5 for a simple one or two piece outfit with a hair accessory, or a $9 outfit which was themed around ballet, tea parties, gardening, etc., and contained extra accessories. These accessories were easy to play with on their own or to incorporate into the furniture playsets. The designs and colors of these furniture playsets further solidified the aesthetic of the Briarberry collection as simple, traditional, cozy and classic. The wooden pieces carved with berries and vines complemented the outfits that were lined with ruffles, lace, and pinafores. It was overall quite charming and never lacking in detail. The pieces were well painted and constructed and where possible included fabric items such as for blankets and pillows or seat cushions and table runners. They were functional as well, even to the point of some furniture being convertible. For example, the sofa bed, which we will look at later, which started as a love seat big enough for one bear to sit on and expanded into a full-size bed. Or the dining room table with drop-down leaves that could be lifted to expand the seating area and include more friends. Other pieces contained plenty of storage for the wide array of accessories and outfits, such as the wardrobe or the china cabinet. Cabinet, although the size of the accessories made them pretty easy to keep track of on their own. They were much larger than the 1 6 scale that you're used to with regular fashion dolls, yet without that chunky, plasticky feeling of baby toys. Speaking of babies, though, there were actually four baby characters introduced into the line. These smaller bears came dressed in onesies and came with a bottle and a blanket. They had limited posability in their legs, although the feet were rounded on the bottom so they weren't able to stand, which makes sense for a baby. A few furniture sets were also created specifically for the babies, such as a crib. Though when looking at the Wayback Machine's version of the website, these items are not listed on the furniture products. When researching for this video, I realized that there were several play sets that I distinctly remember and still have, and even bears that were not mentioned on the official website. These must have come out in the year 2000, the second year and final year of the Briarberry collection. Apparently the website just never updated. However, just a cursory Google search will bring up plenty of secondhand sellers that have real but unaccounted for Briarberry items. For example, there were two holiday sets that were released, one with a Santa bear who came with a sleigh, a sack of toys, and was dressed in a Santa outfit, and another set with a reused version of the sofa bed and a bear named Maryberry who was waiting for a Christmas delivery. Another set was the wedding vanity, which came with a large mirror, a wedding dress, veil, shoes, and a bouquet. There were also other bears, such as Barry Justin, who was dressed in a baseball uniform, and probably the only other boy bear besides baby Joey. And I'm sure there's plenty of other sets that I don't have and am not aware of. The dangerous thing about doing these videos, though, is that it really makes me want to buy them. <laughs> and again, I find it strange that from a big company like Fisher Price, that 
they didn't do a better job cataloging their older toy lines. But perhaps because of the short life of the line, they just weren't as widespread as I had imagined them to be for something from a major toy company. And that's a real shame because although they had more of a niche appeal, I do feel like they would definitely have their fans today and should have had their fans back in the day because they were definitely a unique take on a stuffed animal and a doll. But I can understand too why they struggled when they were up against the likes in their own company of Barbie and little people. But for those who did have them, I do hope that they are as fondly remembered by them as they are by me. And now that I have given you guys the overview of the line, I will present to you my collection. So, the first bear that I happened to pull out is Mary Berry. She is one of the holiday themed ones, as you can tell. She's supposed to be wearing kind of a holiday nightgown. And I just love how soft the outfits are. I would say the fur on these bears is a little more coarse than some other stuffed animals that I have, but it is still nice. They have felt on the inner ears, felt on the bottoms of the feet, and of course uh, there's her name on that side and the Fisher Price logo. As I said, the muzzles are kind of flocked, the eyes are buttons, kind of over top of the muzzle faceplate. They even had little blushing and dimples. They're very sweet. This is her little bow that goes around the ear, and another common theme within the Briarberry collection not only was to have the titular berry embroidered somewhere on the outfit, but also there were a lot of flowers and leaves in kind of a crushed velvet. For this one it's supposed to be like holly, not like a flower, but there are other ones that were more like roses. So the main body of the dress here too is made of a flannel kind of material. The sleeves are puffy with elastic. This bottom part is velour, as well as the red collar, and there's a little bit of lace here. It's just really cute, cozy, and sweet. And also I would like to show you underneath, I forgot about this, but rather than just having a blank fur on the body part, it is a flannel with the berries, vines, and flowers, and even some bumblebees that go all the way around. It's a feature that you don't really see too much because they're wearing clothes, but it's cute. It adds a little bit more personality to the bears. And like I said, the legs are poseable, so you can lift them up. Of course, the joints don't work quite as well now that they're a little bit older, but can stand, sit. The arms are not super poseable. I remember them being more mobile, but they are kind of flat. And I think that part of that reason, like there's no stuffing in here, I don't think. And I don't think there ever was. Probably to make it easier to get the outfit pieces on and off without creating like the creases that you might with a regular stuffed animal if you were to put them in doll clothes or something. That's okay. I mean, it. They're just really cute and soft and squishy. And what I appreciate is even though this muzzle area is hard, most of the body, oh, and bottom of the feet are hard, but most of the body and the head are soft, so they are good for cuddling at night. This one, I believe, is the first one that I ever had. She's not wearing her original outfit. I believe this is the tea party dress, which I think I got the tea party dress set as an adult. I definitely bought a few items for the Briarberry collection as an adult, and as I see them, I'll probably recognize them. But this is Berry Beth, there's her name, Berry Beth, who comes usually in a purple one-piece romper kind of thing and that's probably why my mom got her for me because she was the purple bear and as you can see just comparing Mary Berry and Berry Beth's faces Mary Berry has a bit more of a smirk like her one side of her lips are tilted up more whereas Berry Beth just has a simple smile but they do have pretty similar fur colors, so there's not a lot to distinguish these two specifically. The Tea Party dress is made of cotton and has a print similar to the belly print, only with added teapots into the mix and a yellow background. I think it's super adorable, perfect for a garden party. Love the lace trim and the little pink bow, and of course the matching pink 
headband. It's just an elastic that goes around the head. And that's Berry Beth. The tea party outfit, of course, came with a tea set. So we have a little pink teapot, but it has a yellow lid. It has the berries on the front, a fancy little handle. We had two teacups in saucers to match. They are pink. They have tea inside and little tea bags or, you know, pretending to be the ends of a tea bag hanging out of them with little bees. That's a really super adorable detail. So you get two of these that are the same and then the same mold as the birthday cake, just in a different color with different candles. It's yellow on the inside. In fact, I don't know if this one is the birthday one or if the other one was the tea party one, but it's the same exact molds just with different paint. This is Barry Ellen, who is the poodle. She's one of the friends. Uh, this isn't her original outfit either. This is the school outfit. And I must not have had the school outfit or her very long because she's still got plastic ties and strings attached on herself. So, um, I'll have to cut those off later. But as you can see, she has a slightly different fur texture. She's got more of a minky kind of fur, I guess you would call it, because she's supposed to be a poodle. But you can see right away too that their faces are a little bit different. She uses a slightly modified version of the muzzle. She also has a different eye color. Her eyes are more of a lavender, whereas Berry Beth and Mary Berry have teal. And she has a different expression too. You can see her little tongue sticking out. And again, there's felt on the inside of the ears, which are long and floppy. The school outfit, as you can see, is also made of cotton. It has a cute little red and blue plaid print. There's the berries embroidered on the side and it has not lace, it's like a cotton scalloped edge. Kind of reminds me of what you might find on a bed ruffle, but it's really cute. The collar has little apples printed on it, which is adorable. It's supposed to look like it's a dress over a button down shirt. As you can see, there are little white sleeves and we get the matching headband. The school outfit came with a lunchbox. It has a school bus on the front with a bear in front of it. If you open it up, there is some lunch items inside. So we have a fork and spoon strapped into the inner lid. There's a note from mom on some paper that says, I love you. That is a ultra adorable detail. And then we have a nice healthy lunch of fruits, veggies, and some bread and a couple cookies in there for good measure. There was also a book on the inside. We have a couple of bears practicing music. This outfit here is one of my favorites. This is not her outfit either. <laughs> As you can see, I had a lot of fun dressing them in my favorite clothes, but this is Hannah Berry. Yes, I got that right. And <laughs> she is the bunny, also a purple character. So, you know, as we do. Oh, and I just, I almost forgot. Unlike the bears who do not have tails, the bunny and the dog do have tails. Hannah Berry's fur is similar to the bear fur, just in purple. She's got the same eyes as the other bears and a slightly different shaped muzzle and face too. Cheeks are wider and her head is more pressed in up here and then she's got stand-up bunny ears with pink on the inside. Oh, and she's even got little tiny rabbit teeth. Totally forgot about that. So we have another velour outfit here. This is a full velour cream dress and I just love the colors. The cream with the really dark burgundy rose and this is what I was talking about before that they really like to add these velour flowers. We've got the little velvety leaves. Of course, the berry printed on the side here and the matching headband. And this one has slightly puffy sleeves as well. Again, one of my favorites from the whole collection. And then here we have Berry Chris, the Santa bear, who has more of a tan fur. She has a similar face to Mary Berry in the muzzle area and the eyes, except that they are a darker green, of course, to go with the Christmas theme. And she's basically in a Santa outfit just with a little ruffle for a skirt to make it a girl Santa outfit. <laughs> There's also this pleathery belt 
sewn on to the dress with a gold buckle. I think there's a pom-pom missing here from the holly, but I do love the white trim on everything to make it more Christmassy and the little gold accent around the berry to make it a little more special. And the bottom of her foot says 1999, so it kind of surprises me then that she's not mentioned on the website on the Wayback Machine. And I did check a couple of different timestamps to see if maybe they had updated down the road but I couldn't find anything I don't know sometimes I feel like the Wayback Machine sends you where it wants you to go but the fact that it says 1999 on the bottom of her foot makes me think that they were planning on doing more maybe they wanted to have a yearly holiday bear but I guess the line just didn't get that far then we have our two baby characters well two of the four that exist that I have baby Julie and baby Joey Julie I I think she had a bow too. I'm not sure where that went, but she comes in a one piece little dress with the eyelet lace around the sleeves and a little collar. They also have the little belly pattern, only it only counts as a diaper. The fur that they use for her, it's not even really fur. It was more like a fleecy material than the regular bear fur. I guess supposed to make it look like they have short fur rather than full-grown fur. And of course they had unique little faces, but you can kind of tell that I played with her a lot because she's a little matted in places, not as bright and clean. A lot of them have stainings, especially on the face. And there's her little foot thing on the bottom. It says baby Julie. The feet do move, the legs can go up and down so that they can sit. They just aren't flat on the bottom so they can't stand. And then this is baby Joey. You can see he's got his little tongue sticking out. He's got a tuft of hair. He doesn't have eyelashes on his eyes since he's a boy. And this is not the outfit he came with. I believe this is from the crib. So they're just some little soft onesie pajamas. There's the berry on the side, and they even have little footy grips, like real pajamas, which I think is adorable. The babies are really cute, and I will find the baby accessories once we start digging into that box, so you can see the other things that they came with. And now we come to my box of extra outfits and accessories for these bears. So I'm going to dress up the bears and friends to model them so that you guys can get a better look at them. So first, we have baby Julie in this little dress with all of these scalloped ruffles and a sewn-in bib that has the berry symbol. This is made of a more stretchy knit material as the main material with some cotton trim and satin at the bottom. So like Julie, Joey's outfit is a one piece. We've got some knit material for little sleeves, velour for the main area of the outfit that includes little shorts and a built-in bib. So here is Hannah Berry in her original outfit. She has these purple overalls and there's actual almost embossed designs in the fabric. I think they're supposed to be roses but they've kind of mushed over time so you can't really tell what they are. But she does have two pink roses on her chest. There's a cottony fabric underneath with a leaf print that's supposed to look like a shirt and then she has a matching big rose with leaves for her ear. So as you can probably guess the reason why I really liked her was because she was was all in purple. And then this is Barry Beth's original outfit, which is pretty much identical to Hannah's, except that she has a satin rose. There's no detail on the velour. The shirt part underneath is purple instead of white, and she has just a big purple headband instead of one little bow. But as you can see, they are very similar. They have the same construction of overalls. Overalls are not really my thing though, which is probably why I took both of them out of those outfits. And then this is Barry Ellen's original outfit. Hers is really cute. It is a little pink dress with blue cotton trim. There's a little lighter pink bow in kind of a heart on the chest and then a big bow with a heart for her ear and the print on the fabric of the bow has little hearts. 
so it's very cute you can even see some little hearts pressed into the velour i really like this i wonder why i changed her out of this outfit when i was younger this isn't so much an outfit it's kind of a cloak and i can't remember if there was a hat for this or not. I feel like there was, but I don't see one in my box here. I think this hat came with the wardrobe, but I will put this on just so that we have a reason to look at it. It's a little bit difficult. The elastic is not super long. This hat that came with the wardrobe, it's a big plastic hat with some molded roses in pink. Oh. Anyway, there's a molded ribbon and it looks like little ruffles and it stays on with an elastic, although it doesn't really stay on very well. But the cloak is again, the same velvety material in this really pretty dark green and there are little armholes. So it is pretty easy to put it on over an outfit, even though it looks a little bit bulky. And there is this really dark kind of tartan scarf that is built into it. It has a little fringe at the end and that does continue around the neck. Yeah, I don't remember if this was a, I'm pretty sure it was just a fashion pack, but it must have come with another piece. I just don't remember what. And here we have another outerwear piece. It is this yellow nylon raincoat. I mean, the fact that they used a nylon, even though most of the other materials in this line are really soft and cottony or velvety. I like the fact that they made this feel waterproof. It even has real pockets. Even though they're way too small to get anything into, you can just barely stick your pinky in the opening here. There's some sewn on buttons. It comes with this hat that has a kind of school print on the underside. And yeah, there's like letters and apples and crayons and stuff. And there's even little ear holes for any of the friends who have ears that want to wear this jacket. This outfit was part of the birthday themed fashion pack. It was one of the more expensive fashion packs. It's like a little romper. There's a bow on the front and then a crown to match. It's just made of card stock or paperboard and it has all kinds of birthday symbols on it. So the birthday party set of course came with a birthday cake. It has some candles, we've got pink icing and white cake on the inside. There is a separate slice on a plate as you can see but they are both attached to the plate so you can't really put the slice back in the cake. You can just pretend you cut somebody a slice. And we have this which I think is supposed to be a birthday card. It's just got a bear on the front, on the inside, there's balloons and cake. And on the back, there's a little bee in the Fisher Price logo. This is a nightgown. This came with the original sofa bed set. So it is a white cotton with that leaf print. There's a big ruffle at the bottom that goes all the way around. There's also some ruffly sleeves with lace, a little green bow, and our embroidered berry. And it matches the pillows that generally came with all of these sleep sets. They have that same cotton material with the leaf print and the pillows actually had stuffing in them so that they felt like pillows. I'm not sure what this dress was from. It may have been from the wardrobe but it's just a simple blue dress with a little cotton white ruffle and some white ruffle sleeves, a little bow, there's a collar, and the little berry. Now this is not a complete outfit. This is just an apron that came with the kitchen. It just straps around the waist. There's a little lace across the top with a bow. This little piece that's supposed to look like a towel and then of course the main apron area. But it was just cute that they included this little extra piece for when the bears are cooking dinner. Now here we have the ballet outfit and this is one of the few of the more expensive fashion packs that came with shoes. <laughs> Most of these outfits don't come with shoes but we get this little feathery, well, it's supposed to be feathery headband that has an elastic, a satin top, and then a tulle tutu with some sparkly trim for a hem. There's a little blue tulle flower here and the slippers that are just all pink satin with little bows. It also came with a little dance bag, which is a purple case with ballet shoes on the front, nothing on the back, and it opens up and you can fit the entire outfit inside, plus 
this little ballet program. It's just a little cardboard folded paper with a bear doing Swan Lake. On the inside, there's some more ballet moves. And then on the back, it says Fisher Price. And then finally, the outfit that I kind of find the most strange, but yet also one of the prettiest that they made is the wedding outfit that came with the vanity. So I guess in some ways it makes sense to have a wedding dress because we do have baby bears. So I guess they wanted to make it like, you know, the family, the married couple with the bear. Play out the whole family scenario. <laughs> this dress is so pretty. We have a white satin gown. There's sparkly lace over the bodice here, a little trim, and a white satin rose. There is the veil, which comes with this headpiece that's molded with roses and pearls, and it is long enough and big enough that you can put it over the bear while she's going down the aisle. It just attaches with a couple of elastics to the ears. There's puppy sleeves with lace trim. And then there's even a train with more of the same sparkly lace in the back. And it's a pretty long train. I, I mean, this is a really, really well-made dress for a bear. This is the bouquet, which has kind of flattened areas with giant leaves on the back to make it easier for them to hold. Since they have flat hands, they can just shove their hands in both sides. It's all with molded pink roses and leaves. There's a purple ribbon. This is another set that comes with shoes. These are actually hard shoes instead of slippers, and they have little heels. They have pink roses molded on, and the strangest piece a lace garter belt with a flower? That's a little bit too real. <laughs> there we have it. That just, yeah. There's no way that that's for the hair. It's too small to fit around the head or too big to fit around the ears. This is definitely a garter belt. And while I'm here, might as well show you the vanity. You are able to put the veil in here. That'll fit well with the garter belt. There is some molded berries on the front and a heart. The mirror swivels a little bit and it's pretty reflective. You can see the fake wood grain in the plastic. And there's a hook on the back. I believe this hanger came with the set too. I know I have some hangers from the wardrobe, but they might be in the wardrobe. But there is a hanger that you can hang the dress on on the back of the mirror. So yeah, that's the entire wedding playset. And that was all of the outfits. And now finally we're going to get to the furniture items and I will try to show the associated accessories as I'm showing you the furniture. So I'm gonna start with Barry Chris's sleigh. It's just basically a flat piece, but it does have some metallic silver for the treads or skis, um, blades. What do you call a sleigh's little... Anyway, this part on the front moves so you can make it like she's steering. I've got a velvety red handle and there's some molded berries here and on the back. The other pieces that she came with were this toy sack, which is also made of the same red velvet has a drawstring so that she can sling it over her shoulder and there's a big present inside. It's a plastic box with green and red for the ribbons. There is a fabric plaid bow. And the presents that we get, one candy cane with a bow came with this present and this rubbery bear with a bow on top that's supposed to be a teddy for the teddy. And there were a few molds that were reused that we will see multiples of as we look at these, the Christmas set with Mary Berry. She came with this, which is the sofa bed. As you can see, there is a molded cushion. We've got our berries on the back. It's definitely an old school style of chair with the little ridge on the bottom, the posts on the sides, the kind of wing arms. But then you fold it out and we've got a Oh, and extend it down, and you've got a molded mattress, and it's long enough for a bear. There you go. And one of the pillows I showed you guys earlier came with this one. There was also this Christmassy quilt, has 
kind of an Amish style design on the front with snowflakes, star, a moon, a heart, and there is a velvety trim. It is lined on the back in white. The set also came with a stocking, which is green and has a nutcracker inside. And his little lever doesn't actually make him move, but he's cute. He's got a lot of detail and a familiar candy cane with a green ribbon around it. Mary Berry also left out some snacks for Santa and his reindeer, or her reindeer really. We have a plate with cookies, a couple of carrots on the side, and a glass of milk. I also have the original sofa bed. It's the exact same mold, just in a burgundy magenta kind of plastic color. And the bedding for this bed was the same kind of pillow, but we have this cream colored blanket or pale yellow with a white trim to match the pillow. This set also came with another of the bear for the bears, just in a slightly different color with a pink bow on top, but it's the same mold. And there was a storybook too. It's a plastic square with a bear carved on the front and it's just a bedtime story about a bear going in the bath and then going to bed and on the back it says Fisher Price. This is the oven. This is one of my favorites that I had. We get burners on the top and a little built-in clock. There's hooks for pots and pans, little dials to turn the burners on, a little counter space to prep. Sorry it looks a little dusty and everything. I mean I haven't looked at these things in a long times probably since I moved when we open the oven because we can we find a magenta pot plenty of room for soup or something a pie freshly baked with some berries on top and it's in a little pie tin a little spoon in green that we can use to stir our soup as we're cooking it and again these can hook onto the side of the oven and there is a sheet pan with some cookies and I do love that all of these things can fit inside the oven so that you don't have to worry about them disappearing. But where are you gonna eat when you're done cooking? <laughs> well, at the dining room table, of course, which has been broken for as long as I can remember. At some point, the bottom of the table and the top became separated, but I will show you what it was supposed to look like. Ooh, and the base of it is a little bit cracked too. Um, I'm gonna have to try to fix that. But it's a very classical looking dining room table. We have little legs on the bottom and a fancy pole to hold it up. It's a round table, but as I said earlier, it can be folded down to make it smaller. It also came with, I'm running out of room here, two chairs each with molded berries on the back and plush seat cushions that you can remove as they velcro around the back of the chair. And this came with tons of accessories too. So there was this velvet table runner in a matching magenta tone. There was a set of teacups and saucers. So blue teacups with gold trim the saucers are attached, you can't take them off, but they do have little molded flowers on them. There were two of those, a teapot in the same style, again could be where I got my love of tea from. It also has some gold trimming and flowers. Two of these place settings that look like lace placemats with built-in gold fork and spoon and a little napkin ring with white cloth napkins. And for food items, we had a plate with a piece of pie, a cinnamon roll, and candy, and a plate with a cupcake, and two strawberries. And the dining room table could not be finished without the centerpiece. We have this pretty vase, some berries on it on both sides, and handles, and two flowers, one pink and one lavender, that are made of velvet and have little plastic leaves and stems. Here we have the dresser playset. It has a mirror, of course, with the molded berries. It flips around all the way, and on the back, which is really cute, there's a little mouse 
and baby mouse in front of a mirror. Which is odd because I don't think that there were ever mouse characters in Briarberry. There are a couple of accessories that came with this, such as this little set of perfume bottles and a picture and a little brush that has bristles and molded berries on the back. Those could be stored away in this top cabinet area or in this big drawer at the bottom. They just don't stay close very well. But what I did find in the drawer was baby Julie's bonnet. I was wondering where that went and that's what it looks like on her. There was also this little sleeping hat that goes with the pajamas from the crib. It's only got a hole for one ear, but I think that was a stylistic choice. It's like a little old fashioned nightcap. I also found the bottles for the babies. So this is Julie's, it's yellow and has a heart and molded berry with leaves. There's a little measuring things on the side like a regular bottle and it's the same for Joey just with blue. They each also came with very small velvety blankets. This is Joey's and Julie's. Here we have the crib as I was talking about before. It has a little molded mattress with hearts on the bottom. You've got the berries and a heart cut out here. The railings on the side and it is on a rocking base and the rocking parts have molding on them as well. The crib came with this little blanket which has stars and berries on it and it fits pretty well and you can put one of the babies in it and rock her to sleep. Another baby piece of furniture that I don't think was on the original website was the high chair. It has a white tray, another heart cut out kind of matching the crib. It's all in blue. There's a little foot rest even and there's some heart cutouts on the bottom too. You can stick one of the babies inside and it also came with this bowl of baby cereal. Ah. It also came with this bowl of baby cereal that has a spoon built into it. The final piece of furniture that I have, which I feel like I've been going on about these forever now, is the wardrobe that has heart cutouts in the doors. Again, we've got kind of the knobs on the top, the berries, there's hooks on either side. And if you open the doors, oh, here's the hat from the cloak. I knew there was a hat. So as you can see, it's got the same tartan pattern as the scarf on the cloak, but also inside there is a hanger and another hook so that you can hang some clothes on the inside of the wardrobe. Two hangers, there's a green one too. And an hour and 15 minutes later, I finally have gotten through <laughs> All the furniture and clothes that I have for the Briarberry collection. Oh man, I can't, I forgot how much I have. It's gonna be a really long video. It's gonna take me forever to edit. Ah, and I wanted to try to get it out today. Well, anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this look at the Briarberry collection. As you can see, it was a collection that was very close to my heart because of how much stuff that I saved. And I think it was a very sweet, very charming little line. I love the softness of the bears. I love the fashion aspect of the bears and the designs of the outfits. The very classic inspiration that they clearly took. I love that all the furniture goes so well together. May have helped to mold some of my aesthetic preferences in my adulthood but I don't mind. I hope I didn't bore you guys going on about all the different things that I have from this collection. Thanks so much though if you watched from beginning to end. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think of the Briarberries. Did you have any of these? Did you know about them? Thanks so much for watching the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends, and until next time, dum bum ba dum 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 why is there a wedding bear? I don't know.